You're listening to DraftKings Network. Folks, this year the big game is not just for football fans. It's time to go all in on food. Tums and DraftKings have teamed up to create a free-to-play pool so you can get in on the action and keep on snacking. There's a share of $10,000 up for grabs. To take home the cheddar, just make the right picks about America's game day grub. Play free in the Tums Prop Bites pool on DraftKings to score big without the burn. Learn more at TumsPropBites.com. Eligibility restrictions apply. Void where prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Welcome to the Big Suey. Presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Lebitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. Presented by DraftKings Fantasy Sports. Check out what DraftKings has to offer this season with Code Dan, because life's more fun when you're in on the action. DraftKings, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. Void or prohibited. See DraftKings.com for details. Stugatz just laughed and muttered under his breath, Mahomes has more playoff <laughs> wins than Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> this is not even the completion of his sixth season, right? It's five and a half. Yeah, uh, and, he's 28. Yeah. yeah, and also him and Kelsey have more playoff touchdowns than any combination ever, more than Brady and Gronk, more than uh, Montana and Rice. <laughs> That's crazy. It really is. <laughs> I want to ask you guys something because I think this is a little bit crazy, too, in where it is that we're putting the standard, even though I understand where we're putting the standard. I think the Cowboys have three straight 12-win seasons, and McCarthy's job looked like it should have been in jeopardy. And Sirianni was 10-1 and one five weeks ago, and I don't think any of us could have imagined the possibility of him being fired from there. But now Adam Schefter's reporting, and this one's got some qualifiers on it, Stugat, because uh, Adam Schefter's not getting out there boldly with, while there's nothing official and conversations are still ongoing, mm -hmm. it's trending towards Nick Sirianni remaining the head coach of the Eagles with changes expected at the defensive coordinator position. Was that a fake Schefter? I because tried. it was excellent. It was pretty good. It yeah. was excellent. I feel it like there's excellent. legs. Yeah. I tried at the beginning right. and then I lost confidence in it. Why? Well, it was good. It was yeah. good. You got well, there's this. There's nothing official. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Conversations are still ongoing. <laughs> oh. It is trending towards Nick Sirianni <laughs> remaining the head coach of the Eagles with changes expected at the DC position. And the thing that I wanted to ask you is because this was interesting to me. He might be pressured to fire his offensive coordinator and his defensive coordinator. These people might be his close friends. He is spending more time with them than his family. They have huge commonalities. They're spending 16, 18 hours a day together. It's all lunacy what these people do for a living. And your coaching staffs become your friends. And when ownership comes and asks you to fire your friends, it's hard to do. When you're in a position of strength, like a Bill Belichick, you can fight. But when you're Sirianni and the choice is you or your friends. Your friends are going. You or McDermott your... just made that choice. Um, and I'm asking you, how does that one feel? Because Chris Cody was let go at ESPN. And then we left. Here, in our last two and a half years after Freedom, that Monday where I sounded crazy, I had to protect people from getting fired. Stugatz has gotten in some hot water. I've got to protect him from being fired. When you cannot do it because you don't have the power, when you're Sirianni and you have to protect your own job, what do you imagine those complications are like if these people are your legitimate friends, if they're people that you have relationships with and now they expect you to fight for them? Because when it comes to Chris Cody, your father, Chris, told me something I did not know on that South Beach session I did with him, which is... That when you were let go, he says to me, Dan will figure something out. And I'm like, well, that's interesting that you would feel that way because that's hard to do, to just figure something out there. If Sirianni's got to make a choice, it's me or them, and they're telling him, they got to go or you're going to lose your job too. A guy who's said to be in power no longer actually has power. He's powerless there. What does he do to protect his friends? The answer is he can't. Now, I don't know how close he is to those people, but you're going to become close 
over that time period when you're enduring whatever it is they've endured over the last three years. Don't you think those coaches in that profession, they understand? Like, they understand. They do. This is not unique to Nick Sirianni. Right. And no, it is, happens all the time. What does Nick Sirianni do? Say, no, I'm going to protect my guys, and then lose his job, and then they all do? It, it happens all the time. I'm talking about what gets hidden behind the scenes when Schefter's been – reporting on this and my guess is that some of this stuff hasn't happened already because Sirianni is fighting for them and he's losing my guess is that that's how that happens behind the scenes yes it's the most common thing in the world in that profession for ownership to step in and say I need changes look at how the look at ownership do you know how rabid Philadelphia fans and entitled they are and what they expected this year somebody's blood has to be in the street and these are your friends and you're like, well, I know what happened there. And it was my linebackers couldn't cover anybody. That's not my offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator's fault that my linebackers were shitty and they couldn't cover anybody and everyone in the sport could see it. But there has to be blood in the street when your fan base is howling. And I feel for those people when they're in those positions and it has to be that overt. And I would tell you that even if you understand the profession, it could damage your friendship. It can damage a friendship if they don't know that you fought for them hard enough. If you can't go back to them and say, this is what I told ownership and they told me, if I do not do this, then I'm fired too. Who almost got fired after freedom? Just, We've all been kind of wondering yeah. since that. Just out of curiosity. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that to myself. It was more than one person. And I was almost fired, huh? Well, you know that. No, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you acting as, that, as if that's some sort of surprise? I don't know. More than one person. Hmm. Pepper related or? Yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. Why, why do you think I sounded so crazy that Monday? <laughs> huh. Just that Monday. Mike was gone. <laughs> Mike was almost gone, yes. Huh? <laughs> I wouldn't have worked out. <laughs> that wouldn't have gone well. No. <laughs> no. We were both almost gone. <laughs> for anybody. Imagine having a second freedom four months later because that happened and then you left your own company because of Mike to start another one. That's right. For 48 hours of that time. That is Double correct. or nothing. Oh, I like that. Freedom, double or nothing. I love that not Freedom even a single person two. has suggested, hey, we should do that again. Well, no, they've suggested, but it's been met with such angst that it's been swiftly dismissed. Do you think that Clevelander roof still has that rap on it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I th definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, speaking of angst, have you guys considered it all? Because I thought about this. I have to go to jury duty here today. I have to leave early and go to jury duty. And there is the possibility. Well, thank you for your service. Uh, there is the possibility that I could get uh, in a trial that's so long that I can't get to Las Vegas. Like, I suppose it's possible as part of my civic duty. <laughs> and what I wanted to just ask you guys in terms of angst and things that can happen that can cause problems. Have any of us considered the idea that we're throwing a pool party at what can be 20 degree weather? Yes, I've been saying yeah. it for weeks. It's yeah. going to be it's so heated. cold. heated pools, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah heated. it's heated. It's yeah. heated. If not, cold plunge. Can we get back to you on jury duty, jury duty, though? I love that visual of you walking in there. It's like that show. What was that called? Jury uh, duty. Jury oh. duty, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if James Mars. What if you're in that show? Us. What if it's season two and you walk in there and it's like a lot of weird shit going on here? Yeah. What if you're the actor in it now? Yeah. Wait a minute. You did do that fake Schefter. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you filming season two? Why is your jury duty like thing so late? Isn't it yeah. normally at like eight in the morning? Mm -hmm. no I got a late one, Dan. There was one time where it was like, oh, you have to show up at two o'clock. I was like, for what? And then like 30 it's minutes later, like, oh, you know what? Canceled. What's going on? Didn't Mike have it last week? And then yeah. he came and he's like, yeah, there was no cases today. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's going on over there? I was, I was there for 38 minutes. It's all like, willy nilly. News. I mean, you're done. <laughs> Valerie, uh, Valerie got one too. It's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, so Ooh, got couples one right jury after I got Are they one. targeting us? <laughs> oh my God. Like, love is blind, but jury duty, where it's all couples yeah. as I jurors. Like mm. It's a funny thing to have something that is uh, a, a civic duty where you're protecting freedom and justice and democracy and nobody wants to do it. <laughs> you should be disqualified just by being the biggest leaky faucet wow. in the room. Yeah, right. You should not be allowed to be. I thought she was going to stop at just the biggest. <laughs> you want to be selected, though, though, right? I mean, Super I'd like Bowl, to miss right? the Super Bowl. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would like you guys to go alone. Dan's looking at the defendant trying to I'm raise I'm trying to eyebrows. see if I can like... commit a crime where I lose my 
my actual freedom and end up in jail. Some sort of scandal because you guys haven't considered the idea that it might be 10 degrees. Contempt. You can just lie and say you, you still have jury. We'll never know. Yeah. That's true. I, I'm shocked that Sugats hasn't tried that one yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting to it. Folks, whether you're hosting a game day, a movie night, DiGiorno knows that planning a watch party on a budget isn't easy. You need the perfect setting, the perfect squad, the perfect eats. And luckily, you're a game time mastermind, and you know that grabbing DiGiorno Classic Crust Pizza can bring home the dub. Because it's packed with half a pound of cheese, sauce, and other toppings, and comes at an incredible price. Make the game-winning call and grab a DiGiorno Classic Crust Pizza from the grocery store today. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. Don Lebatar. Tanya, kids, you don't really realize how much time it just adds to your day. And how little they bring to the table. They bring nothing to the table. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to the table. In fact, Net you have to bring the table physically time. to them. Yeah, but I wanted exactly to go to right. Flanagan's before. You know what I would do? I'd grab my keys and I'd hop in my car. Now mm-hmm. there's seven different bags you gotta Baby take. Sitters. It takes 35 yeah. minutes yeah, to go to Flanagan. Mm-hmm. Stugats. Nothing <laughs> lazier than an infant. Move everything around. All of a sudden you can't leave knives everywhere like I'm used to. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Lebetard Show. Is there anything lazier than an infant? <laughs> this is the Don Lebetard Show with the Stugats. I'm having trouble trying to sleep Cause once again Chiefs knock me out As Casey drives The defense tries But they will never stop the throw To Kelsey from Pamela Holmes This is three Times the Chiefs ended a year short Our kicks are wide My face is dumb Is this the end of our window? Cause of Kelsey and Pamela's If Diggs just comes down with that catch, mm-hmm. and, and we'd be talking about that throw forever. In in the wind, in the wind that would knock a forty four year old a forty four yard field goal wide. In that wind, he makes that throw to a receiver who wasn't open. And we're going to be talking. I'm watching on television right now. It's about the did the Bills blow the game instead of the Chiefs winning it. You got to account for the wind when you're a kicker. It's a great question, yeah. by the way. <laughs> The At least just aim left. left if you're a yeah. Bills kicker. Exactly like, right. Far left. It's like when you're a golfer who slices the ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> aim left. Exactly. You go right in the middle of the fairway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to know. You're out there. You're practicing, Dan. They were saying it before the game. They're having real, real difficulty here hitting them over four, 50 yards. Just kick it. That was Jim Nance's fault, though. Right as he's about to kick. AJ, I asked McDermott before the game. He says, I don't trust anyone more with the game on the line than Tyler Bass. <laughs> the old jinx. He huh? was saying that as he started <laughs> like... making the kick. <laughs> Do you guys understand what an absurd throw that was he made to Diggs? It was tell- 60 yards in the air. I'm telling you, I stood up. Apparently, Chris was jerking off. Huh? If you missed earlier in the show, I, I, I refuse okay. no, to say what no I was ex, doing. No but. explanation needed. Thank you. Just let it sit there. Just let it sit there in its discomfort, please. We appreciate you trying to defend yourself. Mike said the other day about the only contribution Mike made to a show the other day was I masturbate five times a day, and he had to eat that. He, he, he had to eat that eat after what? he said it. That he, it, he said oh. it, and he was making a joke, and he couldn't explain it, and I he had to live Vulcan. with it. Phrasing. A lot of protein. <laughs> Do you guys understand five how hard it is to win the media game in that sport when you're Josh Allen, you make that throw, a throw Buffalo would have remembered forever, and now will get forgotten. <laughs> and now it'll only be we've got a new Scott Norwood. We've got a new field goal misser mm-hmm. in that city that never wins ever, anything, that city that has such regional pride in that team. Stugatz, the Bills are the best thing they got. 
Yeah. The Bills. The, the only thing they've got. The Bills are Sabres. The, and not just sports. The wings. I'm, ta- I'm talking about the Bills are the source of the most regional pride, even though they've been laughed at. Maybe because they've been laughed at, and this quarterback brought them hope again. And he made that throw in that situation, and it would have knocked off Mahomes and Kelsey. It was the throw that you need to make to knock off a champion, and he made it. And Diggs, who reportedly has been unhappy there all year, has the worst game of his life. Diggs, who was brought there to make Josh Allen that, to make that play for Josh Allen, the whole season falls apart. And the biggest surprise, Billy was rooting for them. I don't understand. (laughs) Why? I mean, what do you mean, why? Nice story. Billy, what do you mean, I have this newfound friendship also with Christine Lisi. We talk a lot now. (laughs) I wish her good luck. She wishes me good luck on the Dolphins. People are crying. Oh my God. She was on with us and she said when Billy made the comment about Josh Allen's face that Billy was dead to her. That's true. So you've revived that friendship now? I've made it my goal in Mm. life to get on her good side. Mm. I cannot imagine how badly Buffalo Bills fans will feel for a month. Like, it's not, this one's not going away. Never mind today. They're going to have a feeling in the pit of their stomach. They're, they're going to wake up with that today, and it's going to feel something like actual grief. They should be used to it by now, honestly. I, I have some medicine. Bill Belichick. <laughs> Bill's Belichick. Oh, you're going to yeah. offer them a gummy. I think the, the Diggs thing was bad and the missed field goal was bad but oh my god the fake punt that was awful egregious when, when they drew that up they were like it's gonna be hamlin in a big spot <laughs> this is gonna be awesome didn't really work out that way no i can't believe they did that <laughs> so weird. i cannot believe they went for it like that well, with him if you're gonna go for it do it with josh allen I mean, right, <laughs> right. Like yes. lockers. I, I don't know. If, if, Giant quarterback. That's if, amazing at picking that. They stuff should up. have Josh Allen always out there on their punt team. So it's like, ah, oh, he's here. Would have been a giveaway, but I mean. So I think they were saying that as it was happening, there were there were ten guys on the field. Is that what it is? That it's just an automatic go for it if there's a man advantage. And the sideline said, let's let's go, and and, and the ball landed with Demar Hamlin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Man, a bunch of Monday morning quarterbacks here. If that works out, you guys are all like, wow, this is the greatest play in the history of football. Yeah. Goosebumps. But it, but, it, but it didn't. It super it, didn't. But it, it super <laughs> didn't. And they're really, I mean, the Chiefs also were one fumble into the end zone away from running up the score right there. Oh, yeah. Like, that was super lucky that the Bills oh, we got even bailed had a out. chance. Yeah. yeah, they got totally bailed out. You are so right, though, Chris. If it had worked... <laughs> <laughs> That's like an SP for play of the year. Yeah. It is play of the year. I don't think I'm the, the result on that yeah. one. That's a really it's risky probably, move. It's super. Yeah. Wait no. a minute. You think you'd be on here today criticizing yes. the Bills and would, Demar yeah, Hamlin? I'd, I'd, <laughs> don't don't fool. No, no, no. I'm, I would be it's, like, it's, I can't believe they did that. I just want to be clear on this. So the <laughs> yes. Bills win the game, That's not what I'm and saying. they did a fake right. punt that succeeded. You still have them winning the game. That's the moment that the sports media is going to have perspective and be like, you know what? I know you got the result you wanted, but process was bad. No, no, no. I'm talking with that guy in particular. What Tampa Bay did when they went for two, when they're trying to come back, that's the type of situation where they didn't get it and people play the result like, why did you go for two? The Bills doing a fake punt in that situation, I get it. The Chiefs had 10 people on the field and they thought they had a mismatch there, but it was a badly designed play. I'm not just playing the result. Like That's a really risky place to go fourth and five and try to get a first down deep in your own territory. Did Baker Seal come back player of the year last night? With that Demar Hamlin. No, Hamlin had Hamlin that, did. man. No, Hamlin Hamlin did. He had a tackle. He no, he had a tackle on a punt, guys. Well, I think the voting for that's done already, right? Doesn't that end at the regular season? Hmm. Probably went to Hamlin, right? I no. feel like you you, you fire what McDermott. If they, the even if they get that, you fire yeah. McDermott, right? You didn't do anything. Mike. What did Hamlin? What the, he had two tackles what, this year. What's a comeback? All right. We're not doing the oh, show. From the beyond. Don't want to do that. We're not doing it again. We're not doing it again. Billy, you're saying that I you, have him third on mine. You fire McDermott. And Rodgers didn't even come back, and I still have Aaron Rodgers added DeMar Hamlin. Really? Well, Flacco's on there. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. On the metal what stand. do you have to come back from? Because like, it's just being bad is a thing that you over, overcame Baker? yourself? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're just bad. Yes. Bad, the couch, death. They're all on the table in this one. Do, I, they, do they franchise Baker? What are you... 
Like, what do you do there? Cause they got a lot of free agents coming up. So, I know. Yeah. Evans being another. Do you think they chose DeMar Hamlin to, to be the guy to do that carry because yes. he was the best one for the job or they were going for the moment? They That's why I'm saying moment. you fire him. Because That's why like, you fire him. Well, yeah, no, yeah. because what Chris was saying before. Not a time for moments. McDermott, exactly right. right. You're playing for a Super Bowl, not for an SB. And that's what he was playing for in that play was an SB. Yeah. And that is not what you want when you're a head coach. No. If you're going to go for it there, exactly agree. Right. Josh Allen. Yeah. You know what Belichick does? He either goes for it with Josh Allen or he punts and plays defense. That's what he does. Doesn't go for moments. We've talked a lot about Mike Evans today, and it brought up something that I saw Booger McFarland tweet, which was that Mike Evans is a first ballot Hall of Famer that you wouldn't put in your top five at the wide receiver position if you made a top five list. So I thought maybe Stugatz could do a top five first ballot Hall of Famers that you wouldn't put in your top five in their position group. And then there's an opportunity to spin that into five more top fives because then you could name the oh, top wow. five receivers. Yeah. In your, wow. And then we could have like 30 people being listed in one segment, Stu. So I would like you to please work on that. Wow. On it. Andrew Hawkins makes the argument that Mike Evans is the best receiver of this generation because for 10 straight years, he's had 1,000-yard seasons, and he is excellent. Like, nobody would dispute his unstoppable excellence, but uh, he also drops balls uh, quite a bit. He's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> can't have a worse play outside of Kadarius Tony than what Mike Evans did early in that game. Well, thank game. you for thank you for bringing up Kadarius Tony. What was the sponsorship he had here? Fast Switch Energy Drink. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was his stat line in that game because I think McCole Hardman came up yesterday and almost had a stat line to rival it. Are you ready, Stugatz? The yep. McCole Hardman stat line. This one, this beats Josh Allen's great throw. This this beats DeMar Hamlin's <laughs> uh fake punt. One carry for negative one yard, uh -huh. one catch for two <laughs> yards, two fumbles. <laughs> Only one loss, though. Yeah. <laughs> it was a big moment in the game, too. Uh, that is correct. That is a shitty stat line. And he is advancing, and Josh Allen is not, because Stephon Diggs could not catch that ball. <laughs> and Patrick Mahomes. And that... <laughs> He's, uh, he's pretty excellent, even as we see. I think this is the most doubted version of this team the last five years. I think it's actually a surprise that they, uh, that they won that game because I don't believe many people have a great deal of confidence betting against the Chiefs the last four or five years when they're favorites. Yesterday, they were a two-and-a-half-point underdog, and I think people were scared to bet them because of how they looked all season. We remember what it looked like them losing to the Raiders at home. Like, that, they looked done. Their offense didn't look like it could travel anywhere and do anything. It's one of the reasons I say this is a great opportunity for Patrick Mahomes, Dan, because when you talk about, like, Tom Brady and some of those guys, some of the all-time greats, they've all done it with teams that, you don't think are the best version of that team. And he's doing this on the road against, I guess, the two quarterbacks in that discussion for best quarterback in the game. He, I mean, he just did it against Allen and has a chance to do it against Lamar Jackson. Well, let's, let's discuss this for a second because I think we all agree I, that this is a good and fun Final Four. I think we'd also agree with the following. In the AFC, you have the two quarterbacks we know are stars by themselves, and in the NFC, you have two quarterbacks that you wonder if it's the system that makes them that. And San Francisco eked by one of the quarterbacks. I think we all agree, oh, that guy's a star. That guy's going to be a star. and he's, That's the youngest team playoff team there's been in 50 years, Stugatz. It's crazy. Green, Bay's going, Green Bay going into San Francisco, and you seeing San Francisco weekend, weekend the moment Debo leaves the game. We all, all of us see it at the same time. If they do not have McCaffrey, Debo, and Trent Williams, all of them, Brock Purdy is going to suffer by degrees in a way that Patrick Mahomes doesn't as his receivers drop 300-plus yards in passes. But that stat on the 49ers, Stugatz, that they're 1-30 now because they won this one. They now have the one. They're 1-30 when Shanahan trails by five or more points headed into the fourth quarter. That's something no one will ever say about Mahomes. You will never say Mahomes is not someone I fear in the fourth quarter because I just gave you the stat right. that he's 8-2 and two in playoff games when he's down seven or more. Kyle Shanahan is now 1-30 if he trails by five or more 
And he just did it to save his season because Stugatz would have come after Shanahan all over again on you fraud. You do, all you are is this system guy who can do it with an undrafted or the last pick in the draft. You could do magic and stuff, but when he's late in the game and it's the fourth quarter and you need a quarterback to be Joe Montana or Steve Young and not Garoppolo, your system falls apart because your quarterback's not actually that good. He can't do the things that Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes do. I'm still tired of Shanahan, even though he won. Like, enough. Enough of he could do it with this quarterback. He could do it with that quarterback. He did it with Garoppolo. He's doing it with Brock Purdy. He's done what? Here's what he's done. He hasn't won a Super Bowl with any of them. Not any of them. He hasn't won a single. I am so tired of Kyle Shanahan never being on the hot seat, always being anointed as this guy who can get it done with any quarterback. Well, then get it done because he hasn't gotten it done. Eight weeks ago, Brock Purdy was the MVP. Eight weeks ago? Four weeks ago? Four weeks ago. If that's not getting it done, I'll take not getting it done. Because that seems like it'd be fun. <laughs> Get it done with doing. a good quarterback. What? <laughs> I believe that he has these quarterbacks around... Brock Purdy, Jimmy Garoppolo, where if he doesn't get it done, it's because his quarterback wasn't good enough. It's never Kyle Shanahan's fault. It's always he didn't have a good enough quarterback. So you think he would rather have an excuse than a Super Bowl win? Yep. Put it on the poll, Juju. Would (laughs) Kyle Shanahan rather have an excuse than a Super Bowl? So if he wins with one, he's a genius and good for him. But if not, it's never his fault. So he's choosing to not have a good quarterback. You're coming around. Intentionally. Yes. Billy, um, I don't know. I, he traded Trey Lance. I mean, that's right. That was the good quarterback. To the Cowboys. He, he tried to get a. He good gets. One. Listen, he doesn't get criticized for that. I mean, he traded all his draft picks up to get Trey Lance, and he blames it on John Lynch. It's never his fault. Stugatz is in good position here, but he's also in trouble. Uh, Lamar Jackson, he says, win a Super Bowl. Kyle Shanahan, he says, win a Super Bowl. He's a win away from being in the Super Bowl again. <laughs> They're in the NFC Championship uh, game. We'll win it. But he's in trouble, though, because I, you've heard me say this before. You've heard it a lot from me. You've heard me talk about the critic always gets to be right because there are so many other people <laughs> every year that lose than the one who wins. And then he just moves to the next one. Like, if Lamar Jackson wins, he'll just go right over to Kyle Shanahan. It is it is a bad spot for him, though, because if he loses to Dan Campbell when he's a genius and everyone looks at Dan Campbell like kind of like That's a what's got to happen. That's that what's gotta he's going to look bad. <laughs> Don Lebatard. That kind of thing. I love that sound. Is that a bassoon? What is that sound? Huh. It's a tuba. Is it a tuba? I believe it's a tuba. Are you sure? Yes. I would be very interested to find out. Really? Let's get a musicologist on. I think it's a bassoon. I love woodwinds. Yeah. Who do we know that's... Who's I, the music version of Ron McGill that we could have on? I think it's a buffoon. To, to hear that sound and to ID it. Stugatz. I mean, I heard that, and I think I was the butt of that joke. That was Billy. <laughs> no, no. I'm, uh, prior to that, I'm... I'm I'm going in chronological order here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Keep up, Dan. (laughs) Um. (laughs) This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugat. Tony, how did your MMA watch party go? Beautifully. We had an amazing time over at the Taurus of Coconut Grove. We had a bunch of people out there hanging out watching the fights. The fights were good. One was very good. The Duplessis versus Strickland fight, I think, was the best on the car, which was billed supposed to be that way. But uh, we had some uh, fun along the way, Dan. A lot of people rooting for Strickland to lose there. Did he? Or, or did the judges It was him? tight. Let me, let me say, it was very tight. I think Duplessis had enough um, damage on Strickland, cut him in the forehead, cut him in the eye, that it looked like he won the fight, but it was very close. Can you guys play for me a clip that I hope embarrasses somebody from Tony at the fight? Uh, Did your parlay fall apart because you bet a giant favorite and the giant favorite lost? So Taylor asked me, he's like, hey, who do you like on this card? He said, what's your lock of the night? Lock of the night, right? I'm like, Mike Malott's really good. Neil Magny is kind of a journeyman in the welterweight division. Like, this is the fight right now that if you want to throw all your money on, you want to bet Mike Malott. At to this point, Dan, we're, uh, the video we're going to show you. At this point, Mike Malott has been winning all three rounds, taking Neil Magny down. He's got super uh, ground control. He's been killing them all fight. Minus three seventy five favorite. Yeah. Minus three seventy five is a favorite. Yes. And Just based, on. based on the card, by the way. And Tony's the guy you asked. Tony's a trusted voice in the MMA community. He has a Thank dedicated f- following Thank of fans you. that he brings with him anywhere he goes. Thank you. But 
This was 15 seconds into the, out of the fight. We got 15 seconds left. Billy, in the third why round. are you laughing immediately after you say that and then you know covering why. your laughing mouth with your hands? Because no, it, it, it sounded like sarcasm. Mean, what do you mean falsehoods? Everyone saw it. You're on television. Well, if I'm going to be honest, it's because I found a printed out pitch that Tony had for a show, and that was a line from it that I memorized and was throwing out there to see if anyone noticed and no one noticed. Because okay, nobody saw that. Who would have pitch. seen that pitch? C- Carl saw it. Like you're trying to sabotage me from within, puppy. We're already winning. Don't Carl worry about is it. Laughing. Don't worry about it. I mean, it is deck speak, right? A trusted voice. Like it was a really somebody good, else created it. Wasn't it was me. a really good line. Oh, Chris found it. You hate Tony. Falsehoods. I Damn. do not hate Tony. Damn, we don't have to worry about that. That's not true. We're having fun at the MMA hangout. Billy, of course, didn't go. Didn't want to be supportive. It's That's fine. It's nine o'clock at night on a Saturday. You'll be children. okay. You'll live. Anyways, here's the clip of a minus 375 favorite getting pinned down with 15 seconds left, and we are hoping to God that he survives these 15 seconds. Because if he does, we'll win the bet. If not, this is what happens. No way. Keep it out. 15 seconds. Stay with Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> How much money did Taylor lose? <laughs> How much money did Taylor lose? <laughs> Lewis's face was hilarious there. He's like, 15 That's seconds, we fault. got this shit. That's my fault, right? That's my fault. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, Chris, how do you feel about this awkwardness? Because to- Billy just leaned into you, covering his mouth. Well, uh, because Chris saw Chris. Chris showed me the the printout, so that's oh, it why. It was here the other day. Yeah, that's why I did it just for Chris to see if he would notice, but he didn't. He didn't notice. Poor Taylor. Can I just say, Taylor has some bad beats. When we went and did that FIU game. He went to cover the game, like to get video of it for the show, or whatever. And he told us that morning, he's like. I bet everything on FIU, and I was like, oh, Taylor. He gambles recklessly. V- quite recklessly. <laughs> and I don't even know how. We're not a DraftKings state. He won big on the Packers. He had the Packers, I think, plus six or whatever. So they covered. He was big. He wanted to go out and double the money. He's a big, like, that's his strategy. If I win a bet, I'm putting it all on the next bet. And if I win that <laughs> bet, crazy. and so if he gets five bets in, He's he, a, he gets a big fire. chunk. But then yep. it all goes away. But quick. when does it end? Where's the end to that? The end is Mike Malott on his back getting punched by Neil Magny for a substantial amount for Taylor. But it's a no-win proposition because you're going to eventually lose it all if you're just betting right. everything you've won every single time. Exactly. Right. Jessica, you uh, you are probably the only one here who cares about something that happened uh, on either Friday or Saturday, uh, like me and the rest of the group. I don't believe I will get uh, to be interested in this, but yeah, where, I have no idea what it is. Yes. Where I was, a whole lot of people when the news came down, a whole lot of people reached out to me because a lot of my friends work in journalism and have worked in journalism, and it's just a hugely interesting, desperate, and weakened time in. In media, Stugatz. The entire media industry is crumbling. CNN is having in-house fights about whether or not to air parts of a speech from the leading Republican candidate who appears to be running for president, at least in part, to just stay out of jail. And in the little sports sphere where we reside, where we reside uh, about 10 days ago, the sporting news, which I did not know wow. still existed. <laughs> I had no put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Amazing. Did you know the sporting news still existed? <laughs> what a run. The sporting news let go of a few writers as a precursor to Sports Illustrated just basically ended. Uh, They've had an assortment of embarrassments that include AI articles and being a vitamin company, and they've ceased to be anything other than a brand name that for 70 years was the gold standard in the profession that I have always cared about most. In 70 years of excellence, Sports Illustrated dominated the sports media field and showed you sports and athletes in a way that people have not seen them before, and the damage done over the last five years has erased three quarters of a century of work. People don't understand, and I understand why they don't. It's because of age, but how big of a deal Sports Illustrated was when me and Dan were growing up. Like that thing coming to your mailbox once a week, you would run to your mailbox to get that thing. I would personally flip to the back page because Dr. Z's NFL breakdown was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in print. 
It was amazing. They uh, they dominated a, a field that is now extinct. Magazines is never mind. Ma never mind journalism or media. Magazines are basically dead. And they, like I said, they were the best. The best at this thing that is now, if not in, if it, certainly endangered, right on the cusp of extinct. And Sports Illustrated now basically extinct. And it's Sports Illustrated only in name. They will not be doing good sports stories that that make kids who who like. Hell, Sports Illustrated made me want to read and made me want to write. Well, it remains to be seen, I think, what exactly will happen next. But what happened on Friday is that Sports Illustrated staff, the writers and the people that work on the website and for the magazine, received an email that either they were laid off that day and that was their last day of work or they had 90 more days and then they would be laid off. And these are all members of the SI union that we started in 2019 when Sports Illustrated went up for sale uh, and was bought by ABG, Authentic Brands Group, and then licensed to Maven, which is now called um, the Arena Group, which can be a little confusing because they both start with A. But it's a pretty standard like owner-operator agreement. Uh, Arena Group pays for the license from ABG and produces the magazine and runs the website. So Arena Group recently was, um, the majority stake was bought by the guy who founded Five Out Five Hour Energy. His name is Manoj Bar Bargava, I believe is his name. Um, and he had a really weird all staff meeting a few weeks ago where he just seemed like he did not like what was going on there. And there's reporting on this. You can go read the details. It was, sounded very bizarre. And like uh, as many bad things have happened and as many bad managers and CEOs have led Sports Illustrated over the last four years, this was very concerning. And so now a few weeks later, the entire staff has found out that they will no longer have jobs in three months. Um, and I believe that this is all part of a power struggle happening between Arena Group, who runs the magazine, and ABG, who owns the magazine. So I don't know exactly what will happen next. I do know that because of the union, I think Sports Illustrated has existed longer than it probably would have after the initial sale in 2019, because a huge chunk of the staff was laid off in 2019. And it's almost like incredible that the magazine has even been able to exist since then. They laid off the entire copy desk, for example, in 2019 before people that, that bought Sports Illustrated were like, oh, uh, maybe we need those people. Maybe we actually need a copy desk to run a magazine. And so it was just very unorganized and messy from the start because I do not believe that ABG cares or even wants to pretend to care about journalism or any of the stories that made Sports Illustrated an iconic brand. I think that they simply want to put the Sports Illustrated name on things that they can sell, like vitamins and like a hotel, uh, a throw blanket, like whatever the thing is. And not words. Not storytelling, not journalism, not things that, you know, aren't going to make you friends with the leagues that you cover or friends with the athletes that you want to be in business with. I think that they just really care about selling merchandise with the Sports Illustrated name and journalism is like a unfortunate byproduct. And I think that honestly management is very um, threatened by the Sports Illustrated Union and threatened of what happens when a lot of employees can come together and say, we are not being treated with respect. We are not being paid the wages that we deserve. We are being told to do work that we're uncomfortable with that has uh, corporate influence. And I think that getting rid of the union is actually a, a pretty calculated move because like I said, I don't know what will happen next. I don't know if Sports Illustrated will continue in some form with contract workers after the three months is over. I don't know if there will continue to be a magazine written by people that weren't part of the union. I'm not exactly sure how this will shake out. I do know that the union negotiated for recall rights, which means that if you were laid off and the company tries to hire someone for the same position within a certain time period, they have to hire you first or at least interview you and ask you if you want your job back. So I don't know exactly what the future holds, and I don't think anyone really knows. Because like I said, I think this really comes down to a power struggle between these two groups of people and trying to figure out how they can continue to make money off of Sports Illustrated without actually giving a any sort of a shit about quality work and quality journalism and the things that made Sports Illustrated a valuable brand name to begin with. This was a union you helped form. Correct, For yeah. And, and honestly, like, there's no more galvanizing force in your workplace than hey guys, like we're all gonna get laid off. Like we're gonna lose our jobs, we're gonna lose our healthcare. And not to mention this iconic brand that like for many of us was our dream jobs. Like you dream of working for a company like Sports Illustrated when you wanna work in sports media. Like certainly when I was hired by Sports Illustrated, I felt like 
wow, I've really accomplished something in my career. And many people feel that the first time I ever had a magazine story published, um, I mean, I bought like 50 of them the next day and just gave them to all my friends. In fact, I have them in a storage container somewhere because it was so cool. I have one framed in my bedroom right now. Um, it's just a really cool place to work in something that feels like an accomplishment. And so we felt really threatened in 2019 that like this could all go away because we've heard what the people that bought the company are saying about it and what they want to do. And none of these things really mesh with what we're trying to accomplish, which is create stories that audiences will like and cover sports and cover things in a way that's fun and interesting. And so while I blame management over the last like dec decades plus for not being able to figure out a way to make Sports Illustrated, um, you know, b basically like fumbling what's an iconic company by not being able to modernize it and make it profitable in a way that kept people's jobs safe, I do believe that the current owners and operators of Sports Illustrated deserve a ton of blame and honestly should be ashamed of their themselves. Wow. Wow. I don't know, Stugat, so uh, what makes me sadder, right? That a childhood thing that Shamed taught me themselves. to uh, read and write expires or that the people listening to this don't necessarily care, <laughs> that media keeps dying right and left and no one seems to care. But Stugat is proud of you for finally being ashamed of something there. Uh, way to go, Jessica.